Hi, everyone, and welcome to Book Break for the Greece Public Library, the spot for book recommendations. I am Claire. I buy the nonfiction books, and I host two book clubs here at the library. And today, I am joined by my coworker and friend, Stephanie. Um, I'm Stephanie. I um, run a mystery book club here and also order our adult fiction collection. Which is super fun. Yes, very fun. <laughs> So today our theme is books about books, libraries, and bookstores. So the last time Stephanie was on our show and we were talking about everything we were excited about mm -hmm. for 2023, you told me that you had a special yeah. shelf that you love yes. this kind of book. Yes, bookish books is what the shelf is called, yes. Yes, <laughs> and I think librarians in general and book lovers would also agree that they probably fall into this black hole of books. Yes, yes. So... Oh, I guess we should mention the shelf is on Goodreads. I don't even think we said it was Goodreads. Yes. I don't have like a real real life shelf. It's just a, right. a Goodreads shelf. Yeah, a lot of us use Goodreads yes. to keep track of the books we read. Yes. So. Awesome. So today I'm going to get started with one that is we're going to be reading for As the Page Turns in May. So I thought, what the heck, I'll read it a little bit early. Yeah, um, it's called The Lions of Fifth Avenue by Fiona Davis. And if you're familiar with Fiona Davis, she writes historical fiction. Mm -hmm. They're about buildings set in New York City, and there's always like a dual timeline. Like she has a historical story and a more modern story. Okay. So this one I thought would be fascinating because it's actually about the New York City Public Library. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so the story begins, it's in 1913, and there's a young family that's moving into the superintendent's apartment. Mm -hmm. So, and this is real. I had no idea oh, that okay. the families actually lived in the library. Oh, wow. So that's they had a four-bedroom apartment on, I think it was 42nd and 5th oh, Avenue. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, in the depths of the library, they could wander around the library at night. Oh, that's cool. So how cool would that yeah, be? Yeah, yeah. You know. That's fun. So the father is Jack Lyons. He is, in addition to being superintendent, he is writing a novel. Mm -hmm. He's pretty obsessed with this. His wife, Laura, is from a more well-to-do family, and she has two children, Harry and Pearl, but she really is kind of, she's like that woman of the 1900s where she's starting to think that she wants more in her mm -hmm. life. So she's applied to go to journalism school oh, okay. at Columbia University in the city. So the story begins, she's waiting to hear whether she got accepted, mm -hmm. and she did. Um, so she meets a fellow, like on one of her assignments. And by the way, they treated the women horribly. Yeah, I'm and, not surprised. Yeah, yeah like mm -hmm. their assignments were... Oh, you can go see why there's no butter anymore at the Women's oh. Hotel on Such and Such Avenue, where mm -hmm. all the men, male students, got to go and cover like the yeah. mayor's speech that okay, day. Okay, okay. Um, so she's starting to get angry at this. So she decides she's going to go to this tenement, and she runs into a doctor there. Her mm -hmm. name is Dr. Amelia Potter. She was a fellow Vassar graduate, and she is trying to teach women like how to take care of themselves mm -hmm. after they have, you know, give birth oh, okay. and start to decrease the infant mortality rates oh, okay. in the city. Interesting. Um, so after she meets her, her life is pretty much forever changed. Mm -hmm. She joins the Heterodoxy Club, which I looked this up too. Yeah. This is a real oh, okay. club. Interesting. It was a radical all-female group where women are encouraged to share opinions about birth control suffrage and women's rights. Oh, wow. So <laughs> she is combining this with her journalism degree and going off on this tangent. But meanwhile, rare books are starting to disappear in the library. Oh, okay. So there's a mystery aspect. Yes. Okay. And her husband, of course, since he's the superintendent yeah. and has all the keys, has fallen under scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, when an extremely rare book called The Tamerlane, which is a book of poetry by Edgar Allan Poe, mm -hmm. goes missing, their family is pretty much driven into like a crisis type of yeah. situation. Yeah. So fast forward now, yeah. we're in 1993. And th this woman, Laura, mm -hmm. her granddaughter, her name is Sadie Donovan. She loves vintage fashion. She is now working at New York City Public oh, okay. Library. Very cool. And she just became like a curator of a display, mm -hmm. um, the, the Berg Collection. Oh, okay. So Interesting. 
her grandmother, this Laura Lyons, all she knows is she was a very famous like woman suffragette, but upon her death, she asked that all her letters, all her correspondence, everything was destroyed. Wow. So no one really knows much about her. She's yeah. pretty much an enigma, except for the work that she had published. Wow. Um, so she's trying to figure out something that she can put in this exhibit because she's competing with another man okay. to, to get this gotcha. permanent okay. curator position. Yep. But now books are disappearing again. Okay. So, interesting. <laughs> um, so it's interesting. They both have these disappearing books, side, yeah. you know, storylines. And, of course, the two stories intertwine yeah, at the yeah. end. And yep. um, there's, like, different family dramas and everything. But um, some of it was a little preposterous. Okay. okay. But I think it will still have something for the book discussion just because of the what Laura got into and yeah. the way women in that time period oh, were yeah. starting to feel. For sure, um, yeah. But still entertaining. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot going on, and yeah. there's mystery for the mystery lovers. And uh, right, um, how do you feel about like the dual timeline books? I know people tend to like hate or love them. How I know. Do, do you generally like them? Yeah, a lot of times I find myself more drawn to yeah. the older story. Okay, okay. This time I actually kind of like the more modern story. Okay. Even though the family lived in the apartment. Yeah, yeah. That was what really sucked me in okay. to begin with. Yeah. But, you know, I thought the way her storyline went, that's what I thought yeah. was kind of, like, unbelievable at times. But Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I generally like the two timelines. I, I think the biggest complaint when people say they don't like it is, like, confusing, too many characters. Right. Uh, I mean, so sometimes it's not done well, but it, when it is done well and you can kind of see how the stories mesh, I like it. Yeah. It's got to be hard for the writer, too, because they're keeping track of two stories and they have right. to connect them at the right times. And yes. So yeah, that's cool. I'll probably check that one out. Yeah. Sounds really interesting. All of hers are, are generally pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I she's read pretty one well known. Yeah. called The Magnolia Palace that I liked a lot. Oh, okay. But, I haven't read that one either. But all okay. of hers are set like in buildings in New York City. That's like cool. one was set where John Lennon lived. Like that. Whole, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay. Like the Dakota? Is, yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, some of my book group ladies went to New York City to see it, like after they oh, wow. read the book. They were <laughs> like, so we went to the Dakota. Interesting. So. I've never even heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess I'll just start with something like totally opposite. Um, I have a nonfiction book on here. Um, it had been on my to read list for a couple of years and planning this podcast episode with... Um, Claire pushed me to finally read it. Um, it's called I'd Rather Be Reading, The Delights and Dilemmas of the Reading Life by Anne Bogle. Um, I, I don't know much about her, but I know she has um, a pretty well-known blog called like The Modern Mrs. Darcy, and she oh, um, yeah. she has a podcast. I think it's called What to Read Next. Yes, um, I've actually listened to that. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess she's... Um, pretty prolific. Um, I just was drawn to the book just because the title itself, like my biography on all my social media has always just said like, would always rather be reading. So I was, <laughs> I was just like, oh, I got to read this. Um, so it is actually on Hoopla. Um, so that's our uh, ebook service. So there aren't any wait times. I just thought, eh, let me see if it's on there. And it was. Oh, good. Um, so I'm reading it right now. I haven't finished it yet, but it's short. It's, um, I think it's 21 essays. Um, they're all about like, just like the bookish life. Um, like one chapter is called The Books That Find You. Um, another one is called Bookworm Problems. Um, they're just lighthearted. They're fun. I'm basically nodding my head along to everything she's saying. Um, if, you're, if you're bookish in any way, shape, or form, I think you would um, probably enjoy that. I, I've been highlighting like a ton of quotes in there. Yes. Just because every time I read one, I'm like, oh, I can relate to this. I love um, quotes. So this, I will just share one that I um, read in the essay called The Books That Find You. If this resonates with you, you will probably like this book. Um, so she's talking about, you know, finding a good book because, you know, you always hit some duds sometimes. So she says, you're looking for a book that reminds you why you read in the first place. One written well and that will feel like it was written just for you. One that will make you think about things in a new way or feel things you didn't expect a book to make you feel or see things in a new light. A book you don't want to put down, whose characters you don't want to tell goodbye. A book you will close feeling satisfied and grateful, thinking, now that was a good one. 
Um, and that just, I just, I love that. Because yeah. we're always all on the hunt for like the next great book. And, you know, right. I'll read like five in a row that are like three stars. But once you find like that five star read, yes. you're like, this is why I read. You know, I'll read yeah. the book in a day. And um, so I just loved it. I just thought. Oh, I'll, yeah. I will definitely have to add that one to my list because I've read both her blog mm -hmm. and I've listened to her um, podcast before, too. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I guess this this uh, wasn't her first book, too. Apparently, she has other books, but I think this is the only bookish one. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, it's a quick read. If you okay. get it on Hoopla, you can probably read it. Do you it know if day. it was on audio on Hoopla or just an ebook? I believe it was audio book, too. Okay. Um, but I'd have to double That's check. Good to but know. yeah, it's, it's a quick one. So if you're looking for like a palate cleanser, yeah. it's a good one. Everyone needs a good palate yes, cleanser book sure. every now and then. Yep. Speaking of palate cleansers, <laughs> <laughs> my next one is called The Lonely Hearts Club Book Club. It has an adorable cover. I actually got this as an advanced reader copy, but I believe it just came out okay. you know, recently. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of those books, though, that features... I call them the cranky old man books, mm -hmm. kind of like a man called yeah. Uwe or Ove yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it's like the new genre. Um, so this one, though, is set in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, not your typical mm -hmm. you know, bookish setting. Mm -hmm. uh, a young librarian named Sloan Parker has an older gentleman that comes into the library. And this is what bugged me is because I kind of feel like he verbally abused her whenever oh. he came in. And they kind of make it sound like, oh, uh -huh. you know, they're such good friends. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, not so much. <laughs> um but anyway, he has a medical emergency, and she uses, like, the library database. She come, becomes so concerned when mm -hmm. he's not there day after day okay. that she goes to his home. Oh, wow. So she is fired by her boss Dedicated. for, you know, accessing personal yeah. information or whatever. So he's been in the hospital. He is He insists on going home. He is going through at-home nurses because literally he's so verbally abusive that these people are all quitting. Wow. So Sloan takes it upon herself to, you know, now she has no job to, mm -hmm. you know, be like a home care, you know, <laughs> person and, you know, be nice to uh -huh. him, which I had a really hard time buying that. Yeah. I'm like, who leaves their job? Yeah. Like she was actually, she wasn't fired. The woman okay. said, if you continue to pursue this uh, and okay. go to his home or whatever, mm, she did it then anyways. I'm going to have to, you know, let you go. So mm -hmm. she resigned or whatever. Wow. And, um, and I'm just thinking, who leaves yeah. behind their medical? Like, like she was dating, of course, a rich cry practice, yes. but really does yes. that still make sense to you yeah well, have um, to suspend reality once in a while yes, i guess exactly Fiction. so if you're good at that which <laughs> i'm not um <laughs> it probably is a good book for you but um and he does of course start to come around like of what course, what yes. sloan does is she decides like the whole premise of this book is books will bring people together yeah. books yeah. and stories so she starts forming this book club. Like he has a neighbor across the street. Her name is Maisie. She's a psychic. She has a teenage daughter that's given her a lot of trouble mm -hmm. and is like, she's separated from the husband. So she's constantly like, you know, ditching her mom and mm -hmm. going to the ex-husbands, which, oh, you know, okay. makes her feel really bad about yeah. herself. Yep. Um, and then we have the grandson of author shows up. Wow. And his mother was estranged from him, but of course made a deathbed, you know, yes. promise. Of like, course. you will go and reconcile yeah. with yeah. your grandfather. So oh. he's there to oh. try to put everything right. Uh -huh. And he doesn't really even know, like, what made them... Yeah. separate in oh, the first okay. place because okay. his mom never really would talk yeah. about him. Yeah. Um, and then we have another character that comes in that was a former co-worker of author. He was actually a college professor mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to speak to him, but, you know, this guy kind of wants mm -hmm. to reconcile. Like, they obviously had a big break. Okay. You know, something destroyed their relationship. Yeah. So, you know, some of the books they read were Remains of the Day, um, the Joy Luck Club oh, okay. was another one. Yep. Anne of Green Gables, they really went into that one. And, you know, it was fun. Yeah. It was entertaining. I've never really gone for that, you know, cranky old man trope. Yes. But some people really yes. like it. Yes, it's very popular now ever since yeah. A Man Called Oove came out. Yeah, so um, I guess they like though. that redemption of character yes. type thing. Yes. And I am too much of a... A cynic to believe in such a yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, so yeah, so it was they basically formed this book club yes. around this, and everybody's guy. life, you know, starts to fall into yes. place. Yes, you know, 
Um, some happy endings, some heartache, you know, some bad things do happen, but in mm-hmm. general, it's a feel good story. Okay, good. So if you want a palate cleanser, yeah. feel good story, yeah. and like the cranky old man trope, then yeah. This is for you, The Lonely Hearts Book Club. That sounds by cute. Lucy I, Gilmore. I like reading books about book clubs because I have several book clubs, and mine are nothing like they sound in the stories. Like they're reading <laughs> classics and they're talking about the books for two hours. My book clubs, we, I call it snack club sometimes because <laughs> we just like, I'll bring some chips. Okay, you bring brownies. And then we sit and we eat and we mention the book maybe once or twice. Yeah. Um, and then we just like, gossip otherwise so I, I don't know how other people's book clubs are but one of my book clubs is like that. that's so funny yeah um all right let's see so the next one i wanted to mention um i haven't read yet it's something that i am looking forward to reading so i'm curious if uh anybody else has read it who's listening um it's called the roughest draft by emily wibberly and austin sigmund broca um it is kind of like a romance slash chiclet novel about um Two authors, Katrina and Nathan, who write novels together. Apparently, they're big bestsellers. Um, and they have some sort of break in their relationship. Um, I guess they didn't tell the public why, but they just um, hated each other, it said. They started to hate each other. I don't know why. I'm sure we would find out in the book. Um, but apparently, the issue is that they have a contract to write another book together. Um, so apparently they meet up in this um, small town in Florida where they were writing their other novels um, to kind of reconcile so they can write this new book together. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it sounds sounds cute. Um, it kind of sounds like an enemies to lovers trope. Yeah, I if think people, it's probably going to be yeah, like that. If people like that. And yeah. a lot of people do really like that. Yeah, it, it's fun. I, it's a good trope. And um, I don't know anything about these two authors who wrote the book, but it's always interesting, you know, you wonder what part of this book is true, knowing that these were also co-authors. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what their relationship is or anything like that. So um, I'm, I do want to read the book. It, it looks really cute. Um, yeah, just seems fun. You know, I don't see a ton of books where there's two authors on it. It's mostly like a James Patterson with his, all of his books are co-authored. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's writing most of them. It'd be interesting um, to see how the two authors approached the story, you know, the, the storytelling. Yes. And if yep. like, one assumed that one character or the other. Yeah. Yes. I think, yeah, that is a cool way to do the um, the co-authoring, like where each person writes a different character. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that's how it is in this book, but I'm curious to see. Um, it just sounded kind of like a unique concept. Um I love chiclet books that are just like light and fun and airy. So that's why I added that one to my list. Um, it just came out last year, so I haven't heard too much about it yet, mm-hmm. about as terms of, you know, if we know anybody who's read it. Um, but yeah, it looked cute. That sounds I'll, good. I'll check it out and let you know how it is yeah, when I read it. Definitely. My last one, a lot of people have read this book and raved about it. I it was more of a three star for me. Okay, three to possibly four. It was the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um very popular. Yes. yes, and I picked it up because you know here, the word library in the mm-hmm. title that just pulled me right in. Oh yeah, for sure. But really though, it's not so much about a library. Like the library in the story is a metaphor. Okay. Um, so and this is the other kind of storyline that bothers me. This one the lead character, her name is Nora, has decided she wants to die. And I don't really like, that was another thing I didn't like about Ove. I don't like when people are, you know, talking about suicide and they make it seem like, oh, well, you'll have this magical adventure and then you won't want to kill yourself anymore. You know, it just doesn't sit well with Mm -hmm. me. But um, anyway, she's had a very unusual life. She was a champion swimmer. she was engaged. She was a philosophy major. She was a very talented musician in a band that her mm-hmm. brother started. So what happened? Like, what happened to get Nora to this state? Mm-hmm. So she finds herself um, in the Midnight Library with her old middle school librarian. Mm-hmm. And that part was pretty cool. But mm-hmm. instead of the books, like, each book is a curated possible life that she could have chosen That's interesting yeah so she begins to say okay well what if i didn't break my engagement i'll take this book and see what happened okay and wouldn't we all love to know that yes. you yes. know and that's the thing that gets me about yeah. these kind of books yeah yeah but it is 
fun to see her explore. And what she finds out is, oh, well, you know, maybe that wasn't supposed to work out anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, this wasn't the big thing that ruined your life. Okay. Um, So then she does, like, the band. And then, you know, she had a friend that moved to Australia, and she was always going to go and see Uh her and never did. So she, you know, one of the lives she chooses to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. and, And then what happens? So... In the so it's really it wasn't so much a library it was like each book was a parallel universe okay that's cool so meanwhile she's like out of it because she's taken some pills but she's not dead oh okay she's kind of in between gotcha so okay. that's why all of this is happening okay um do you get like a it's a wonderful life vibe yes yeah. yes that was very, very much of the vibe. Yeah. And I think that's why so many people like it. So many people love that movie. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I'm very, I think if you've had someone in your family that suffered from mental illness, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I did. And it, mm-hmm. you know, you realize that it's a lot harder than this, people. Yeah. You don't go to sleep one yeah. night and then wake yeah. up and decide, yes, I want to live. And, yeah. You know, but anyway. Yeah, I'm, that's uh that's I'm, it's interesting. So it was very interesting. Yeah. I would say it was more of a fantasy oh, novel. Okay. Yeah, I could see because, that. Because, yeah. you know, unless someone is living a parallel life right. out there and wants to jump in and tell me so, yeah. you know, I yeah. don't I don't think this is possible. But um yeah, that book has been popular the entire time ever since it's been released it's like we can't keep it on the shelves right I know and we it was like what two, 2019 2020 yeah like it's it's a couple years old at yeah this and point. it's and it's still always checked out all the time so that's it's so interesting to me especially knowing it's kind of like got that downer vibe to it um she does it does end on a positive note that's good okay. like she kind of figures out that the only thing really it's not so much the choices that she made, but it's the choices that she's going to make from within. Yeah. And her perspective on her own life. Yeah. That's going to get her. Yeah. And she realized the life she had really wasn't so bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So it's like a redemption. I, people yes. like that in, yes. uh, in their books. So I can see why it's popular. So in a way it was good. Yeah. But, you know, I think I have a personal bias yeah. about that subject. So, yeah. Um, but yes, it has been incredibly popular. I think a lot of book yeah, clubs have read this book. A lot of book clubs are, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Um, well, I guess I will go in the opposite direction and um, talk about a cozy mystery. Um, like I mentioned, I do run the book club here for mysteries. We kind of alternate between cozy mysteries and just like your reg- regular traditional mystery. Um, I like both. Um, the book that I am talking about, though, is it's called Bait and Witch by Angela Sanders. It's called The Witch Way Librarian Mysteries. This one is the first in the series. Um, my book club did read this one, and generally it was a pretty good consensus. Um, so it's about this librarian uh, named Josie. She was working for the Library of Congress and heard some sort of thing she wasn't supposed to hear and went to the FBI and then fled to this small town in Oregon um so right off the bat you're like oh that's not very realistic (laughs) but that's cozy mysteries are pretty absurd in general yeah um so anyway so she's working at this new library um it's in this old victorian mansion um there are people in the town who are trying to knock it down and build some sort of retreat so this poor lady she's trying to save the library she's trying to evade the situation with the FBI, and then she finds a dead body in the woods outside of the library. So she's got a lot of uh, drama going on. And then, of course, you know, the cozy mysteries. It's always, you know, the uh, not detective, such as this lady who's a librarian, trying to solve the crime. Right. Um, And I love cozy mysteries. I know it sounds like I'm just, they're very silly, but I do love them. Oh, I like them too. Um, So, But yeah, like I said, they're just a little absurd not believable at all because then you know in the next seven books she finds another dead body in every single book yeah um coincidence i guess yeah and sometimes Uh, they even like bake things yeah there's a lot of cozy (laughs) mysteries that you know yeah so uh yeah the themes with cozy they're all themed there's usually an animal in it a bakery or a bookshop or a library um so this one kind of hits a bunch of them it's got a cat um a library oh and i forgot to mention because there's already so much stuff going on she was also a witch also oh which is a cat talk (laughs) 
I can't remember if the cat talked or not. Because that would make it totally awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like it did. I read it a couple <laughs> years ago. But yeah, so she's also a witch, and she's just discovering this on top of the dead body, the FBI, the magical cat. Um, but yeah, we, I liked it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was fun. Yeah, um, it does sound fun, yeah, actually. Yeah, it's just a light read. Uh, the fourth book is coming out in May, so it's a fairly new series so far. Um, but my book club really enjoyed it. Um, there are so many books bookish themed cozy mysteries um do you have any you like out. favorite oldies that you read from um, a long time ago or there even? there's a pretty well-known long series called the library lovers mysteries by jen mckinley you've probably mm-hmm. seen that there's 13 books in that series so far um there's uh, a couple ones about book groups that I thought I could mention. There's a Cozy Capers book group series by Maddie Day. She's a really good cozy author. Um, I read her Country Store Mysteries. We read that for the book club, too. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a series called By the Book by Tamara Berry, um, and that one is about an author. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can just find so many bookish ones. There's ones about book clubs, bookstores, libraries, authors. There's even a bed and breakfast one called The Book Lover's Bed and Breakfast Mysteries by Victoria Gilbert. And it's apparently a and b who hosts, like, bookish events. Oh. Probably not anything that happens in real life, but it would be fun. Yeah. Fun to think about. So, yeah, I mean, there are just so many cozies out there that have this theme that we like. And, so. Steph, you mentioned Bait and Witch. Was, what number is that in the So series? that is the first one. First one. Yep. Oh, good. Um, so, yeah, it was a fun start to the series. I, I definitely will continue on with that series for sure. <laughs> I realized after I talked to you that I had a couple oldies on my oh, shelf okay. that I read. One of which was I read in twenty just last year, The Woman in the Library, and okay. I think this one is on Hoopla too. Oh, okay. But Good. it's you know I talked about it once on Book Break, but it's a a um, an Australian writer is writing back and forth to a man in the United States, and her book is set in the Boston Public Library, so he's supposedly giving her like you know, factual, scenic information and so Mm -hmm. forth. But as their correspondence starts to go, it becomes more and more off the rails with this guy. Uh Um, But it was very interesting having a a murder set in the Boston Public Library. Yeah, that's interesting. And and also there's excerpts of the book that she's writing Mm -hmm. within a book. So it's like a book within a book. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Yeah. you don't see that a lot. Yeah, and then I remembered liking The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery. Did you ever read that? I don't think I read that one, but it was huge. I need to add it to my list, I think, if you liked it. I don't know, did you like it? Yes, Okay. and that's a bookstore owner. Okay. Well, he's an old man too, but he wasn't really cranky. He was just a nice old man. All right. Well, that's good. Uh, and I read one called Shadows of the Wind, which was a Spanish translation. Somebody, oh, okay. a lot of people say that is their favorite book ever. Interesting. It wasn't my favorite book okay. ever. But if you like fantasy, and it was, um, his uh, this boy's father was an antiquarian book dealer. Okay. So he discovers this one book, and then when he's trying to find more books by this author, he realizes somebody is systematically destroying all of this author's, his name is Julian Carax, like mm-hmm. all of his books. Oh, okay. So, and then there is a secret, like, secret dark library. Like, Interesting. Underground. That's so, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. One of my o- older, it's not even that old, favorite bookish books is, I know one that you also love was the um, Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. Yes, yes. Kim Richardson, I think it was yeah. your name, right? Kim Michelle um, Richardson. Yeah, we had like a virtual author visit with her. So yes. that's why, what prompted me to read the book. And th- I mean, it became one of my probably top 10 books. I think it's on my favorites shelf. Yeah. Um, a lot of listeners have probably already read it, but it's uh, historical about, they're called the Pack Horse Librarians, is that what they were called? Of Kentucky. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, and it was based on true events about this um, woman who delivered books on a horse in Kentucky. Um, it was amazing. I mean, it was so well researched. It was so well written. It was emotional. Yeah, I loved she it. She lives in Kentucky too. Yes. so I really, it felt very authentic to yes. me. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, and there's a sequel to that one. It's called The Book Woman's Daughter. I think. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that's another oldie but goodie. That's it was yeah. amazing. I loved it. Awesome. Well, that's it for this episode of Book Break, but let us know if any of these titles interest you or if you can add any to our list because Stephanie and I always are willing to read more books about books. (laughs) Um, Thank you for joining us, and then we'll see you in a couple of weeks when we'll have some spring reading recommendations for you. Thanks for listening. 
Book Break is a production of the Grease Public Library, made possible through the support of the friends of the Grease Public Library. Theme music composed and performed by Sean Greif.